uh, welcome to our channel Elimika Mtandaoni. Uh, my name is Agustino Mogosi. Uh, in this video, we'll talk about system software. And here we'll see the power behind the power. Um, after finishing this video, uh, you should be able to answer the following questions. For example, uh, we'll talk about the components of the system software. What are the components of system software? We'll talk about the operating system, what it does. Uh, what are the principal functions of the operating system? We'll also talk about other system software like device drivers and utility programs. And we'll see what are the characteristics of device drivers and utility programs. Uh, we'll also discuss about the common operating systems and what are some of the common desktop, network, and portable uh, operating uh, systems. What we need is a science that is called the uh, proctology, that is a way of thinking about machines that focuses on how things will actually be used. Now, uh, let us discuss what is a system software, but before discussing about a system software, uh, what's a software actually? A software is a set of instructions that tell a computer what to do. And as we have said, a software is actually of two types. We have application software, which is a software that can perform useful work on general purpose tasks, such as when we talk about uh, a word processing or a spreadsheets uh, that is used for um, writing, that is used for uh, calculations, financial calculations, etc. Or we can have some software that are used for uh, entertainment. Actually, hundreds of application software packages are available for personal uh, computers. And when we talk about a system software, which actually uh, we normally find them already installed uh, when you buy a new computer. This uh, system software actually enables the application software to interact with the computer and helps the computer to manage its internal and external resources. There are only a handful of system uh, software packages for personal uh, computers. But let us today talk about the three basic components of a system software that you need to know about. We have, when we talk about a system software components, we have one which is called operating systems. And when we talk about operating system, this is a principal component of a system software in any computing uh, system. We have device drivers as another component of a system uh, software. Speaking of device drivers, actually they help the computer control peripheral devices. Speaking of peripheral devices, these are devices that are external to the computer. Speaking of a mouse, uh, speaking of an external device like a printer, uh, external device like a printer, uh, some are found within the system unity, but they are external to the computer. Think of um, devices that provide sound, yeah, they give sound to your computer. So uh, such devices, um, they are controlled. They are controlled by these uh, drivers. We have uh, what we call utility programs. Speaking of utility program, these are generally used to support, enhance, or expand existing programs in a computer uh, system. There is uh, a fourth type. There is a fourth type uh, of these components. We call it a language translator. We write it as a language translator. So uh, generally, we, uh, uh, basically we just have three components. That is operating system, device drivers, and utility programs. But in addition to that, we have another uh, component of our operating system, which is called the a language translators that we will describe in other, uh, other, other videos. So now let us go into details and look at these uh, components of 
um, system software. And speaking of these three components of system software, system software actually is it acts as an interface between the user and the application software and the computer hardware. Uh, think of this this one here as a user. Let's have uh, a drawing here. Say this is a user of a computer. So the use of a computer first interacts with application software. So here we have a layer of application software. But the application software interacts with a system software. System software is in here. And the system software is the one that interacts with the hardware. So the user cannot directly interact with the hardware, but instead the user interacts with the application software that also interacts with a, a system software. And speaking of a system software, at the a center here, the principal component is the operating system. And beside the operating system, we have device drivers and we have utility programs. So uh, the three components of uh, system software are found in here. We have drivers, we have operating system, and we have utility programs. That's user 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 first interacts with the operating system interacts with the uh, the the application software where the application software then interacts with the uh, operating system sorry so we have here the operating system we have the device drivers and we have the utility programs here uh, let's have a clear diagram of this so that you can understand we have a user here user interacts with the uh, application software so here we have an application software and when you talk about application software for example there is a user here using microsoft word there is a user using microsoft word then this microsoft words interacts with the, the system software that consists of the operating system consists of device drivers consists of utility programs it is the system software that talks with the hardware so the hardware does not talk with the uh, application software, but instead the hardware talks with the uh, system software that interprets uh, whatever the hardware talks about to the uh, application software. Now, let us go into details and see what is operating system. The question uh, that we need to uh, put um, in front is, what are the principal functions of operating systems? But before we go to the principal functions of operating system, let us first talk about uh, the operating system. Operating system, in short, written as OS. Um, also, it is called a uh, software platform. Another word for that, it is called a software platform. This consists of a uh, master system of programs that manage the basic operations of a computer. You remember the basic of operations of a computer that is inputting, processing, storage, and out outputting. So uh, this uh, operating system consists of master system of programs that manage the basic operations of a computer. Actually, these programs provide resource management services of many kinds. In particular, they handle the control and use of hardware resources. Speaking of hardware resources, it includes the disk space, how much memory should be used, by what program, and at what time. Also, how about the memory? What memory should be allocated for what instruction, for what activity? They also uh, manage or control the CPU time allocation and also they control the peripheral uh, devices the operating system allows you to control on your own tasks or applications rather than on the complexities of managing the computer there are different sizes and different makes of uh, computer systems that have their own operating systems for example uh, there are some uh, IBM mainframe computers that 
have their own uh, operating uh, systems. But we have some mean uh, computers that use uh, operating systems such as Windows. Uh, they enable users to write whatever or to do some personal uh, activities. Microcomputer users actually uh, readily experience this aggravation of uh, incompatibility that can exist between when you buy uh, a new a new computer. So uh, basically, when we talk about um, what's the role of operating system, actually the main or the basic thing that the operating system does is to control and use to control the use of hardware resources that include the disk space, include uh, the memory, include the CPU time allocation and peripheral uh, devices. Now, let us talk about the principal functions of operating systems, one after another. The first principal function of operating system that we talk about is booting. Speaking of booting, actually the work of operating system begins as soon as you turn on your computer. That process of turning on your computer, we call it booting. Booting, by definition, we can say, is the process of loading an operating system into computer's main memory. When we say loading, means that you have your memory and uh, it is where, uh, before the operating system starts being used, it should be loaded into the main memory. This loading actually is accomplished by programs that are stored permanently in the computer's electronic circuitry. When you turn on uh, your computer, programs that are called diagnostic routines, they test the memory and the central processing unit and some other parts of the system to make sure that they are running properly. Then what follows next is what we call BIOS. BIOS stands for Basic Input and Output uh, System. These basic input-output uh, system programs are then copied into the main memory that help the computer interpret keyboard characters or transmit characters to display the screen. The boot program that obtains the operating system, usually from the hard disk, and loads it into the computer main memory, where it remains there until you turn the computer off. So when you power a computer by turning on the power on switch, it is called a cold boot. So when speaking of booting, we have two types of booting. We have a cold boot and a warm boot. The cold boot happens during the turning on of a computer that was switched off. If your computer is already running, and you want to restart that, this is what called a warm booting or a warm start. Normally, your computer would boot from the hard drive, but if the drive is damaged or it is not, it does not contain the operating system, then you can boot from a flash disk or you can boot from a CD, optical drive, and that device that is a computer can boot from, it is called a bootable device. So if your computer does not come with a bootable uh, device, then you can create your own by copying an operating system into uh, that disk. That is called booting, is one of the basic or principal uh, functions of operating uh, systems. Another function of operating systems is the user interface. The first thing that you see after your computer finishes booting is what we call user interface. The user controllable display screen that allows you to communicate or interact with your computer. And such operating uh, user interfaces can be of two types. There are those that contains uh, that are most popular today, 
that um, they are called uh, graphics user interfaces. That do today's computers, most of them have such interfaces that allow you to use a mouse or a keyboard to select uh, small pictorial pictures. These small pictorial pictures, we call them icons and some commands from menus of activities. So such uh, computers with such kind of interfaces that are called graphic user interfaces. There are some other kind of interfaces that we call command line interfaces that do not involve the use of mouses or keystrokes to select some pictorial pictures because there are no pictures. You just interact with them through commands. So uh, that is another uh, function of operating system that is to give or to provide a user uh, interface. We have another type which is called the CPU management. Suppose you are writing a report, say, uh, using a word processing program and you want to print out a portion of it while continuing to write. So you will be doing stuff simultaneously. Then how does the computer manage both tasks? The task of writing using a word processing program while printing. Like a police officer that directs traffic, the supervisor or the kernel within the CPU that manages that CPU, it remains in main memory while the computer is running and directs other non-resident programs, that programs that are not in the main memory to perform tasks that support application programs. Thus, if you enter a command to print your document, say, then operating system will select a printer if there is more than one uh, printer. It will then notify the computer to begin executing instructions from the appropriate program that is known as a printer driver because it controls or drives the, the printer. Meanwhile, many operating systems allow you to continue writing where uh, it's not for this supervisor program that is called a kernel. You would have to stop writing and wait for your document to print before you could resume. So it is possible for you to, while you are writing, you can be playing music. You can also be printing because it is the operating system that uh, manages the CPU. The operating system also manages memory. It keeps track of the locations within main memory where the programs and the data are stored. And it can swap between portions of data and programs between main memory and secondary storage such as a computer hard disk. This capability allows a computer to hold only the most immediate needed data and programs within the main memory. Yet it has ready access to programs and data on the hard disk thereby greatly expanding memory capacity. So when we say we uh, operating system manages memory, it is through three ways. How does it manage uh, uh, the memory? It is through three, three ways. The first one is through partitioning. It is through partitioning. Speaking of partitioning, it means that the operating system divides the memory into separate areas that are called partitions, that each of which can hold a program or data. Suppose this is a main memory. Then what operating system does, it divides it into several partitions. And when, uh, let's say, one instruction or one program wants to use a portion, this portion is reserved, then it is used by that program. After it is being used, it is then released. That is one way that uh, operating system manages, uh, manages uh, memory. Another way that an operating system manages uh, 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 memory is through foreground and background. Some computer systems divide memory into 
two areas the one which is called the foreground and another one that is called the background uh, areas the foreground programs have higher priority and background programs have lower priority when you are working for example at your microcomputer the four program is the one that you are currently working with for example if you are typing using word processing program then that is taken to be a foreground program but the background program might be regulating the flow of print images to your printer etc or there may be a certain program running at the back that is called a background program another way that the operating system manages memory is through queues programs that are to be executed they wait on a disk in a queue a queue is a temporary holding place for programs or data so data are being held temporarily in a certain place that disk area where the programs or documents wait that is called the a buffer so speaking of a buffer speaking of a buffer is just a disk area where these programs or documents that need to be executed or need to be um, added into the main uh, memory are uh, being uh, they are made to wait there so these print jobs normally uh, they are usually spooled we say they are spooled spooled means they are placed into that buffer speaking of the word spool spool means they are they are being placed into the buffer where they wait in a queue to be printed that is it so let us proceed with another uh, principal function of operating system another function is file management speaking of a file file is actually a named collection of uh, related information a file can be a program such as microsoft word processing program or it can be a data such as a word processing document or a spreadsheet or images songs and the like so uh, files can be discussed in other videos that will come files containing programs and data that are located in many places on your uh, hard disk and other secondary storage uh, devices so you can have a file on your flash flash disk you can have a file uh, in an optical disk etc so the operating system records the storage location of all files if you move or rename or delete a file the operating system manages such changes and helps you to locate and gain access to it for example you can copy or duplicate files and programs from one disk to another disk you can back up or make a duplicate copy of the contents of a disk you can erase or remove from a disk any file or programs that are no longer useful you can also rename or give new file names to each the files on the disk all those are enabled with the help of operating system another a uh, principal function of operating system is task management it is called task uh, management computer is required to perform many different tasks at once in word processing for example it accepts input data stores the data on a disk and prints out the document seemingly and uh, simultaneously some computers operating system can also handle more than one program at the same time word processing spreadsheet database researchers each program is displayed in a separate window on the screen as you can see that you can open uh, your web browser you can also be opening microsoft word you can also be opening uh, a media player all those can be opened and they are opened on a different uh, window on a screen among the ways that operating systems manage tasks in order to run uh, uh, more efficiently ah there are different ways that an operating system can manage a uh, task that is task management it is through multitasking that is one multitasking multitasking means executing more than one program concurrently so you execute 
uh, more than one program concurrently on the same computer with one central processor. Another way that you can manage tasks is through multi-programming. Multi-programming. That means this is a concurrent execution of different users' programs. The execution of two or more programs concurrently on a multi-user operating system. That is called the multi-programming. But there is another that we call multi-sharing or time-sharing. We call it time-sharing. Speaking of time-sharing, this is a kind of round-robin processing of programs for several users. That is, a single computer processes the tasks of several users at different stations in a round-robin uh, fashion. That means um, when you talk about multitasking and time sharing, they differ a kind slightly. With multitasking, the processor directs the program to take turns accomplishing uh, small tasks or events, such as, let's say, making a calculation or searching for a record or printing out part of a document, each event may take a different amount of time to complete. With the time sharing, the computer spends a fixed amount of time with each program before going on to the next one. Another way that uh, operating system manages tasks is through multi-processing. This is simultaneous processing of two or more programs by multiple computers. Multiprocessing is, the processing is done by two or more computers or processors that are linked together to perform uh, the work simultaneously. So you have what we call core processing, we call it uh, core processing. The last uh, principal function of operating system is what we call uh, formatting. Formatting or initializing a disk is the process of preparing that disk so that it can store data or programs. In today's world, it is very easier to uh, buy uh, a disk that is pre-formatted. We buy flash disks and start using them. But before that, it was first, after you have bought, uh, let's say, a flash disk, you will have to prepare it, you will have to initialize it, you will have to format it. Uh, the last function of operating system is security management. Nowadays, operating systems allow users to control access to their computers. This is especially important when uh, several people use one computer and one network in which various people use one system. So users uh, gain access in the same manner as accessing their email. So they use a username and a password. That is one uh, thing. Now let us uh, proceed with other components of system uh, software. That is other system software, that is the device drivers and utility uh, programs. Device drivers actually are specialized software programs that allow input and output devices to communicate with the rest of the uh, computer systems. Many basic uh, device drivers come with the system uh, software. When you buy a computer, for example, the system software will guide you through choosing and installing uh, the necessary drivers. If, however, you buy a new peripheral device, for example, if you buy a mouse or a scanner or a printer, then they will come with the SCD or a package uh, that will include, include that device drivers for that peripheral device to work. So uh, sometimes if you find your computer, uh, the sound of your computer is not there, then uh, the first thing you can check is uh, are the audio drivers uh, well installed? So to check that, what you can do is uh, for for example, if you are using a uh, Windows uh, operating system, you can uh, right click on the uh, My Computer uh, icon. After right clicking, then you click a place written Manage, and after you do that, a kind of um, 
window like this will appear a kind of window like this will appear and you will go to a place written device driver you will find here are a number of uh, device drivers for computer uh, we have disk drivers display adapters they are all div drivers drivers for printers print queues drivers for processors um, software uh, devices sound audio and game controllers storage controllers they are all uh, device, uh, drivers. For example, if you want to uh, look at the drivers of, let's say, a mouse, then you click the arrow here. You click that arrow here. Then uh, from there, you can see a kind of pop-up window like this will appear. So such kind of window that will appear will tell you if your uh, device is, uh, your driver is uh, well installed or not so here you will find a message like this that shows this device um, the device is working uh, properly it shows the type of device and it will tell you uh, it is working properly or uh, not working properly if you go to the drivers there you will see what drivers are uh, for that uh, device now let us move to utility programs. Speaking of utility programs, also known as uh, service programs, they perform tasks related to the control and allocation of computer resources. These actually they enhance the existing functions or provide services uh, that are not supplied by other uh, system software programs. And among the tasks that are performed by utilities are uh, the following. Among the tasks, you will find that there are some utilities, they do um, activities such as backup. Uh, backup utility uh, means you may have your hard disk uh, failed. Then you, if you have backed up, if you have backed up, that means uh, you have a duplicate copy of information on another disk that can be hard drive, etc. That is called backup. But uh, speaking of data, uh, recovery utility, this is used to restore data that has been physically damaged or corrupted. That is, uh, you do it through the use of uh, data recovery. And we have a uh, virus protection. Speaking of uh, virus protection, we use uh, a certain program called antivirus. It's actually a utility program that scans the hard disks or the, the flash disk or the memory to detect if there are some viruses. There are a lot of antiviruses programs such as uh, McAfee, uh, some Kaspersky, etc. There are a lot of antivirus uh, programs. We have also data uh, compression. Speaking of data compression utilities, these what they do is they remove redundant elements or gaps and unnecessary data from computer storage space so that uh, the computer can use less space, that is, fewer bits, which is required to store or transmit uh, the data. We have another utility, which is file defragmentation. Uh, when we talk about fragmentation, means scattering of portions of files about the disk in non-adjacent areas. They greatly, uh, normally, if... Uh, these portions are scattered, then they normally slow the access of the files. So to make the accessing of the files uh, to be faster, then we need to defragment. That means we need to uh, remove the scattering of the portions. The de defragmenter, which is that utility program, uh, commonly called defragmenter, uh, will find all these scattered files on your hard disk and reorganize them as contiguous, contiguous files. We have the last utility, which we call disk scanner um, and disk cleaner. These utilities actually detect and correct certain types of common problems on your hard disk and floppy disk, flash disk, and search for and remove unnecessary files, such as temporary files, etc., etc. Now, let us finish the introduction to operating system by looking at the common operating system. What's a platform? A platform is actually a particular processor model and operating system on which a computer system is based. For example, there are some Mac platforms. We call them 
Apple Macintosh, there are some Windows platforms, there are some P PCs platforms such as Dell, Compaq, Gateway, Hualet Packard, IBM that run Microsoft Windows. Sometimes um, these platforms are called Wintel platforms and because it is, it is Windows and Intel operating systems, uh, Intel processors. Uh, despite the dominance of Windows platform, there are some other systems that are called legacy systems that are still in use today. When we say a legacy system is actually an older system which is an outdated but is still functional in today's technology. For example, there are some disk operating system, we call them DOS, that um, they, currently, they are currently being used. There are some other uh, uh, operating systems. There are five most common operating systems include the Windows operating system that dominates the, uh, the desktop uh, uh, platforms. There are some Apple Mac OS. There are Linux operating system, Android, and some Apple's iOS. Thank you. That was just an introduction to uh, system software. Ciao.